Okay, in this video I'm going to walk you through installing Moody uh, onto a Raspberry Pi to turn it into a supposedly pretty good streamer. So the first thing you're going to want to do is run over and get the uh, Raspberry Pi imager. I'll leave all these links down in the site. I'm picking the uh, imager up right from GitHub rather than one of the other sites that distribute it and you never actually know if they've changed anything. Anyway, the latest version is 162, so you just click on that and download it. You stick it somewhere where you're going to be able to find it. After that, you jump over to the Moody Audio site and download the latest version, which is 760. You just click on it, let it come down. Uh, I've already done that, so I'm not going to redo it again. And uh, go to the setup guide. The actual setup guide is pretty good to give you a step-by-step -step to uh, get you going. So once you've got that done, We'll switch over to the Explorer window here. So you're going to want to extract the zip file you got uh, from Moody. It's going to give you a Moody uh, ISO file. And then you just run the imager program. But when it pops up, there we go. You're just going to want to go to wherever you extracted that uh, file. In my case, it was my downloads Moody folder. And I'll load it and choose your storage that you want to go to. It's automatically picked the only USB storage I've got attached to this machine, which is a 16 gig micro SD card I picked up from the Walrus Smart for seven bucks. <laughs> I have no idea how good it is or if it'll uh, just die on me shortly after, but they're cheap enough to try again. So you double click that and tell it to write. Now, of course, it's gonna wipe the data. It's loading a new operating system to the entire drive. And then you let this run. Now this takes quite a while, so uh, <laughs> you go get a coffee or three. I'm actually going to go get a coffee or three. And we're back. Looks like it's finished writing the file, and now it's doing a verify of it. Didn't realize it did that. Oh, well, we're back. It's finished. So you can now kill the program that wrote the disk or uh, the SD card. Ah, you have to remount it. Annoying. Okay, it's mounted the uh, little SD card with the Moody operating system as uh, looks like I on my system. You want to create a little empty file just called SSH. So open Notepad and do immediate save as and call it SSH, then exit Notepad. And you have to go and rename it to take out the .txt extender. And that's all you want it to do. And then you just copy that file, which I've already created here. And paste it straight into that boot drive right into its root directory. That SSH file tells the operating system of the uh, Raspberry Pi that you want to start the SSH daemon. So you can use a, a terminal emulator to get straight into it in the console mode, not just using the uh, interface. Anyway, I'll go get the... Uh, card into the Raspberry Pi and boot it up. I guess I have to eject the file first. No, yeah, you want to close it properly. Okay, for the first boot, you're going to want to have the Raspberry Pi plugged into an actual uh, Ethernet network cable since it won't know where to find your uh, wireless network and you're coming up headless. Now, my Raspberry Pi has booted up now and you should just need to type Moody into the address bar. It registers itself as M-O-O-D-E uh, when it comes online. So there's the interface and it's come up nicely. Now to get to the configuration portion, click on that M and then configure. And the first thing you want to do is go over to the system tab. And here you're going to set your time zone, which I've already done since it's uh, my second attempt at uh, going through this. The first time I record didn't go. And always click set after you've set one of these items as uh, that causes it to actually record until you've clicked set nothing happens. And I've gone through and turned off features that I'm not interested in using just to release resources since uh, my Raspberry Pi is pretty old. So I've turned off HDMI since I'm going headless. You're going to want to come here and expand the file system on the SD card since I believe it was only a 2 gig file system that was created. And if your card is bigger like the one I use is 16 gig, you want to use all the space. 
So you click on the expand there, and that, that will go for quite a while as it expands the drive, and then it will want to uh, reboot. When it asks you to reboot, you just come here to the uh, 3Ms again, hit the power thing, and then click restart and wait. I've already done that, so I'm not going to reboot now. The next thing is click to come here and hit your network tab, and you're going to pick your own network and enter your super secret password, which I'm not going to show. And unfortunately, after doing this, I believe it wants to reboot again. So <laughs> you're going to have to go over to that M uh, little icon and hit the reboot button if it asks you to reboot. Now, once again, I've already done this, so I'm not going to reboot again just to save time. And you're going to want to come back in one more time to set up your audio interface. Okay, now, unless you have an I2S device, you want to leave this one set as none. And come down to MPD options. You hit edit. And do a save. There should really be nothing else to save on this one. Or nothing else to change on this one at this point. There it is, it's saved, and the MPD daemon's been restarted. And now you want to go to your library. Once again, you hit create, you scan. It's looking for available shares on your network. And go to the pickles when it's done, and pick your uh, SMB share where your audio file is, enter your credentials if there are any. Give it a friendly name, which I think next time I won't hit anything. It just made the selection longer. Come back here, hit the M. Oops. Yeah, there it is. Hit the M, it showed we've got a mount. And remember where this regenerate is. If the next step doesn't work right, you're going to have to come here and regenerate the uh, database. But at this point, you just hit the M and do an update library. Hit the M and do an update library. At that point, you're going to just wait for the uh, it to finish. This is going to take a rather long time, depending on how big your library is. You're going to have that little spinny circle up in the corner by the M there to wait for it to uh, get done. And then you can see what it's got now. If NAS, which is what a, it comes up as, doesn't show up, just hit the uh, refresh button and uh, then you go into it. And there it is. Oh, it looks like I actually have to turn the uh, DAC on for it to work. Let me power it on. And one more thing I'm going to show you is how to add the new radio stations. You come here to the plus sign, you enter all the junk, and uh, new on the shelf. I'll show you one I've, I'll show you one I've already uh, added to my list. I said primarily you just to get the correct URL and everything else is uh, just information for you.
Oh, you always want to shut the uh, Raspberry down properly. If you don't, you'll be able to corrupt the SD card. That's uh, about the only annoyance of using a little Raspberry Pi uh, for as a streamer. And that's about it.